In this section, we're going to talk about something called canonical addresses. And it has to do with the idea that although we ostensibly have 64-bit systems, in reality, we can't use all the bits. Now, there's different ways that the bit space could be divided up, but I just wanted to show you this picture up front so that when I explain the next sections, you have something in your head to visualize it. And the basic point is, the address space, the 64-bit linear address space, is broken up such that the uppermost range is valid, and the lowermost range is valid, and the middle bits for some number of bits is going to be invalid. So as I mentioned, on today's processors, we don't actually have the capability to access either a 64-bit linear address space or a 64-bit physical address space. Only if you have the absolute newest hardware would you have the capability to access 57-bit linear and 52-bit physical. So the canonical addresses are ones in which the upper N unused bits are always zero or one. So if you had a new processor and you supported 57 bits and your operating system used it, which as I said, I don't know anyone who does right now, then the bits beyond 57 would all have to always be zero or always be one. And the processor would just sign extend the 57th bit or 56th bit if you're zero indexing to make it so that that one or that zero is set for all of the uppermost bits. So from Intel's five level paging paper, it says a 48 bit canonical address is canonical if bits 47, so that's zero indexed, 47 through 63 are all identical. They all have to be zero, they all have to be one. Same thing with 57 bit, bits 56 through 63 have to be all identical. So in terms of the 48 bit linear address space, which is used for four level paging, that would mean that the bits from the addresses from the linear address space from zero all the way up to 00007 FFFF are all part of the lower range. And so this seven is one in which bit index 46 is set to zero, and then all the rest of the bits have to be set to zero. Whereas this high range is one in bit index 47, uh, sorry, 46 is set to one, and then all of the upper bits have to be one. So this is what gives us our red-green chart here in which there are two ranges that are canonical addresses, the lower range and the upper range. The lower range are the ones starting at zero all the way up to the point where the maximum, everything is ones except for bit index 46, and the upper range is one where everything is zeros all the way up to index 46 is one, and these upper things are extended to one, and then all the way up to all ones. So by the same token, a 57-bit canonical address would just be one in which bits 56 to 63 must all be the same, and so that looks like this. You can see it's obviously, you know, before it was 0, 0, 0, 0, so there were four zeros followed by seven Fs, and here it's 0, 0, and then all Fs. And the upper range starts at FF, there's a zero all the way up to all Fs. So here it's using up more of the 64-bit address space. So this range is wider, this range is wider, but there are still some range of addresses in the middle that are not valid and for which the processor will throw an error. Specifically, it will throw a general protection fault. So it's interesting that actually there's been a few types of vulnerabilities that have been discovered over the years due to the behavior of the system when general protection faults are thrown due to accesses using non-canonical addresses. So I'll put links on the website to the details and write-ups about these various CVEs. And they really just had to do with the fact that the, you know, if you go look at the pseudocode for a given assembly instruction, if you looked at sysred, if you looked at pop ss, they had certain behaviors and certain erroring out cases for general protection faults and particular ways that an attacker could take advantage of this by setting addresses as non-canonical would lead to exception handling where attacker controlled values were being used for some registers. And so that was the general protection fault as mentioned before in the interrupt section, it's interrupt 13. It's a general sort of catch-all that's used for all sorts of different types of errors when assembly instructions are used in weird ways. You'll see it all over the place if you go look at the details of assembly instructions. But here is the thing that I really want you to take away from canonical addresses. It is the fact that most operating systems place the kernel in the high range and place user space in the low range. Consequently, 
if you just look at the top bits of an address, if it's Fs, you can generally say that is some sort of kernel address, that is some sort of kernel pointer, some sort of kernel function pointer. And if the top bits are all zeros, then generally speaking for most operating systems that is expected to be a user space address. So this can be useful when, for instance, an attacker is trying to compromise the kernel, if they're trying to look for memory disclosure vulnerabilities in order to you know, leak information about kernel address space layout randomization, or if they're trying to find you know, function pointers to overwrite, uh, knowledge of the fact that addresses in kernel tend to start with Fs is a nice thing to give the attacker information.